And we're live, hello, and welcome to Let's Build. Have we got anyone in chat yet? Hello, Mr. Lancaster, welcome. We're going to build a brake van. <laughs> Hello, Alex. Oh, I managed to press the live button and it's still scary. How are we this evening? Hello Killian, I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Great to see people here. I'm actually quite, quite excited now that I'm seeing chat. This is feeling good. So, break ground building from scratch. For beginners, so I'm sure a lot of people here do know what, how to do basics, but we're going to start with the basics. So, I have printed my drawings and stuck them to some 20 fair plastic card. Very simple and easy start. And quite simply, all I'm going to do is cut round them. Although on these, I'm going to cut slightly above because I've Put my footboards on here and I don't need those because we are using a Hornby chassis for this because again I want this to be easy for everyone so a Hornby chassis it's it's not quite right but it's the right size and almost the right wheelbase so let's begin And a new knife blade. Always use a new knife blade for a new project. Picked the wrong one to start. Should have started at the bottom, but never mind. In fact, I'm going to change to the bottom because, you know, let's do it sensibly. The good thing about working with 20 fowl is it only needs scoring a couple of times. And your part will break off. I said I'm cutting actually on this line here because I don't need the footboards that I drew on here because they are on the chassis although we will be adjusting the footboards on the chassis because the existing ones are metal footboards which would be wrong. And in fact yes you can see there is one I built earlier. Well, that one had the lantern lookout. This one will not have the lantern lookout, as this is representing after they were rebuilt later in life. Hello, Alex. How are you this evening? Thank you. 
Yes, I know I make riveting TV with all this silence, don't I? Yes, the other one was built in exactly the same way. And in fact, that one was built and painted over about four hours. So I'm hoping we can have this one looking pretty decent by midnight. So now we have two identical sides cut out, ready. The reason we do two is one of them is going to be the beading, the other one is going to be the panel in behind. So to do the planking, we quite simply run the knife lightly along each plank. Because we've got the beading covering over the front, it does not matter that we are going over bits that won't actually have these lines on. Turn this round once we get so far down that it's leaning off and not holding my knife straight anymore. And then once we have got all the way down, the knife goes in upside down. and runs down our score marks which increases the width of them and gives us our planking. This is, in, this is where the um, taped on drawings cause us a problem though. So I'm actually going to peel them off this one. So you can actually see on there already, very slightly, our lines going along for the planks. Which we will now, if I was really prepared I'd have these lights on already and I'd be able to see what I'm doing. So now I can see those lines still. And I can run the upside down knife along them, giving us much nicer lines for the planking. Which you should be able to see there. Hopefully, if the light's not too bright behind it. There we go. Yes, do as our good moderator says and smash the like button, lots and lots and lots. And subscribe if you're not already. I wasn't actually going to plug that tonight, but since Mr Lancaster has. Hello Luke, how are you this evening? So for the benefit of Luke, we've cut some sides out, two of the same orientation which will go over each other to give us the 3D panelling and I am currently scoring in the plank marks to the bit that will be the inner panel. I have caused myself some issues with, with peeling off the drawing in fact though. So 
bear with me with that, I do have a solution. I'm very well, Luke, thank you. So, on here, this actually gets cut, as I'm going to show you on the existing body. You can see the outer panelling that we're now working on is three sections and then one section here. So there is a lot of this that is going. So you should be able to see here, these are the sections that will be used and the rest will be thrown away. But that does make life easier for us in some respects because this is where my solution to my problem from earlier comes in. My problem from earlier is that I don't have the markings for cutting out the windows. And ideally I would have done that before peeling it off. But that would require me to think. Um, that doesn't happen. As I can use this bit, it's only stuck on with double sided tape. Because these are cut the same size. That gives me the position for the doors. So, let's actually do that now. Drill to hand to cut to drill into the corners. It's good having an Archimedes drill that runs itself in reverse. You'll be glad to know I've done this all wrong already. I may actually have to restart this part. But that's what scratch building is all about. It doesn't matter if we get it wrong. In fact, I am starting that part again because I've done it way too wrong. If we look on here, I'm sure some of you probably already noticed but the doors are engraved into that rear section that I have scored all the way through. So it does cause some issues, but that's fine. I have another set of drawings right here. Again, the good thing about scratch building, that will have cost me all of 2p in plastic. Not an issue in the slightest. And it means you get to see the boring bit that I did first, so you didn't have to watch it. Double-sided tape.
And for those who don't know, as I'm sure there are some of you that don't, the reason I work on a glass surface is because it is perfectly smooth. And no matter what I do to it, it will stay that way and can be cleaned up and kept smooth. Comes in handy when you're building your own chassis because you can put your wheels down on it and make sure they all touch the ground no matter how many wheels you have and you know that you have a nice smooth surface that you're working on and they're all touching it properly. As you can see it comes off painting. And I see I was just being asked about the bit of glass as well, and now you know. It's almost like I was psychic and knew that Luke was going to ask. See that'll even fit there, we're not even wasting any material. It's also why I have to change knife blades so much because glass isn't too kind to knife blades. I really should get a cutting mat, but I haven't. Hello Linny, I missed your arrival. How are you? Lots of lots and lots of messages since your arrival. So let's start again and cut this piece out properly. For those that don't know, this project would be something completely different if it wasn't for Linny, as Linny is the one that actually supplied me with the measurements that I made these drawings from. Right, so this time we're going to do this properly. And we're going to drill out these windows first. Ideally I would be using a slightly bigger drill bit. But for that, I would need my power drill, which is a little bit overkill for 20 foul plastic card.
right, they have all gone all the way through. We have our holes. And because we're working with 20 foul, it does not take much for the knife to get through to connect the holes. And I still maintain that anyone can do this. All you have to do is know how. So even just that, that is almost all the way through all those. This is why I use a rounded end blade. So I can put it in and roll it across the space. I'm going to move on to doing it on the wood so I can actually press through into the workbench just to finish it off. One window. Of course, the other way of doing windows like this would be to cut the corners diagonally, leaving in the rounded section and then cleaning that out with a file afterwards. Which sometimes is how I do it, sometimes I do it this way, it really varies. There is no right or wrong way of doing these things. And they all need a file to clean them up afterwards anyway, so it really doesn't matter. But now we actually have a piece with windows. And we can almost and we can go back to that bit we did first now on our now trashed piece. But this time we won't run the whole length of the carriage, we'll miss the doors out. Spinning it around. Now the drawings for this brake van I did actually do myself. And that was drawings for both this rebuilt version and the lantern lookout as built version so if anyone wants to have a go at this drop me a message somewhere you can have a copy of the drawings as a pdf um uh, i use a curved blade for everything mr lancaster it's the only type of blade i have and always has been they seem to be quite hard to get though if when i was looking before starting this 
I took a quick look on eBay. Every other type of Exacto blade was on there except for these. And I actually had to go to the model shop to pick up some new ones. But the curved blade is sort of general purpose and it works well. Me, I get on with it so it gets used. Right, so that is the initial lines done for all these sections and we need to do these two panels as well. around the edges of the panels because we've got the curved corners in I am going to do these freehand rather than using the ruler to keep me straight because I will just mess it up otherwise and so when I'm doing jobs like this I don't turn the knife I hold the knife still and turn the part underneath it. And I find that gives me better control on keeping the radius of the curve even throughout. I also need to score out around the doors on this piece. So for those that have been here the whole time, you'll see I did the initial cuts very wrong. But we all make mistakes. No one's going to tell you off for doing that. And of course the good thing about making mistakes on scratch building, as I said, it cost me about two peas worth of plastic. If it was a kit I'd be a bit more upset about making that mistake because it would have cost me the part of the kit. So the only bits left to cut on here now are the ventilators. Which again I will do freehand. They will not come out very well but they will not particularly be seen. So before I peel this off now, I'm actually going to go over all these lines again because some of them on the last piece weren't very well defined. So going over them all again, just gives me that extra bit of definition for when I'm carving them out with the back of the blade.
Well, that's what I was hoping for, Mr. Lancaster, is that we would all rather be able, that you would all be able to learn something. Because I do like to badger on about how easy this scratch building stuff is. And I stand by that. There is nothing difficult here. I'm just running a knife down some lines on a bit of paper. And I'm even cheating to do that because I'm using a ruler to keep it straight. I also noticed I forgot this middle line between the doors. No one said anything. So we'll just get that one twice quickly. I'm glad about that, Alex. Very glad you're all learning, because that's what I want to do. I want everyone to be able to do this. Do you still think it's really, really hard? The hard thing about it is the fingers. There we go. That is now ready for me to peel the paper off of. So we're going to do that now. And yes, all these same techniques work for you in Engage. I mean, you could take a copy of my drawings and print them out at half size, and you'd have Engage drawings and be able to make one of these brake vans. Um, model a good railway. biggest problem with this double sided tape is when you're taking it off and everything gets stuck to your fingers. <laughs> oh, you'll be fine Alex, you could do it. I have faith. Then you could have all the Midland stock. <laughs> He's leaving the Midland for you, Alex. Oh, I mean, you're right on two of those points. Should shame about that first railway you've mentioned, though. <laughs> well said, Luke. <laughs> so we can now see I have a bit of plastic, which I can get the lighting right on the back of it. Has lots of lines on it. There we go. It almost looks like the side of a brake van. But it's very dirty and needs to clean. And I've not actually brought my acetone over here that I would normally clean it with. So that was clever of me. These work just as well. For when you do things like this. But they take a bit more effort than I would like and can gunk up the ends. That's what I was after. Luke to be open and everything to fall out. 
I do believe what I have down here will do it. No, no, you can't put me in a timeout. A problem I have on your stream quite often. Oh yes, that's working quite nicely. And of course this is the magic that is IPA, which I obviously only buy in small quantities. Wouldn't want too much of a dangerous chemical just lying around the house. Um, I could show you the state of the E4 loop. I'm, I'm not sure you'd like it as much anymore. It was in much better condition when it was yours. It's missing a few bits. Speaking of which, look. I have a parcel for you here. I'm going to try and remember to take it to the office tomorrow and it can go to the post office. So now we have a bit that looks much better because it's clean. If my camera wants to focus now, there we go. Much better because it's clean. But again, you can see that we haven't got great definition. On our door panel. Oh, excellent. I'm glad you have plans for the carriages I sent you, or will be sending you. So now, I'm just going to run the knife backwards, down the planking lines. Went a bit wobbly on that one. I should be using the ruler, really. You can see here just how much is coming out. It gives us a much wider groove, which is much more realistic for a four mil carriage. Which you should hopefully be able to see there the top ones that have been done. compared to the bottom ones which haven't.
and now with everything I do like this just run the knife blade along it and that takes off any raised edges that have been caused through the process giving us nice defined lines into the plastic but no big ridges sticking up from them Thank you, I'm glad you're all pleased at my progress. I do have a reputation for doing these things quite quickly. Don't ever get yourselves one of those reputations. It's not worth it. Always good to take your time. Right, and that's the door marked out. And I'm just going to dive into my um, popular cola flavoured drink with no sugar in it, because sugar is bad, kids. And let us continue. So the next piece is just come off this side and our, our panelling for round the edges. Now this may actually be better done in 10,020 but some of us don't have a collection of 10 thou about because we use it all in our cutter. And some people have given me ideas that mean this live streaming stuff has cost me enough money so far this week. I wonder who that could be. Put the lid back on the IPA. Because otherwise it will evaporate. And that is rather expensive to replace in that quantity. <laughs> no, no, not, not sponsored at all, Alex. If they want me to mention their name, they can pay me to do so. <laughs> right, so that's that bit cut down to size. Now, as you can see, that's some quite small lines around the outside there. Come back into focus, please. There we go. So I want to remove that whole panelled section from the middle. This is where scratch building gets a bit tricky. But all you need is a decent knife and some patience. I mean, I'll be honest, I'm not known for that. That's why I'm not a doctor, but... We'll give it a go. Again, we're just following lines with a knife. We're not going to quite go all the way to the edge on these because we will inevitably go past the edge. So we will start from each side and come back on ourselves.
very conscious of where my hands are going tonight. Try not to get in the way of the camera too much. It would be easier to check if I wasn't having to watch the stream on a time delay unless I lean over to the camera. get much of a choice there. There was no other way I was holding that one properly. <sighs> yes, made a few suggestions, Mr. Lancaster. A few suggestions. Hmm. I hold you entirely responsible for the fact I'm even sat here with a camera rolling at me. You'd be surprised, Alex. It's doable. There's other ways of having patience. However, I'm trying to keep the stream PG, so... It just has to be patience for me today. Plus, again, if I waste this much plastic card because I get it wrong... I mean, this is 50p a sheet. Anything, Luke. Scratch building is brilliant. Give it a go. Start with something simple. If you don't know what you want, if you if you want to get some experience scratch building, like I said, I can send you over these drawings, and you can do these. I'm actually going to be doing up some more drawings for things, probably, that I will do in future streams. So I might even have a full selection of streams, of drawings from streams that you can use. Yes, yes, P PG. Until I slice my finger off. Probably shouldn't even make that joke on a PG stream. But advanced warning, it's happened before. Admittedly, if it does happen again, I'm taking the stream down off YouTube afterwards, so you won't be subjected to that. If you're watching after the event, if this is still here, I haven't cut my finger off. Excellent! Inspir inspiring people! Would that be the chassis we were discussing earlier? This is getting hacked up. And there we go, with nothing more than a decent blade and some patience. We have removed the planking. And that forms our first bit of beading that sits over that end. Indeed, as Linny says, you do not have to scratch build the chassis. I am not scratch building the chassis, I am using a Hornby one. I'm going to drop the weight out of it now because it's really bugging me every time I pick it up. 
Hornby chassis are brilliant. This is to scale. The Hornby chassis matches it in length almost perfect. It matches in width almost perfect. So this chassis, all it will get is its old style couplings removed, its wheels changed, maybe a bit of brake gear changed because I know the brake gear on it is wrong. And it's only getting the couplings removed because we're using proper couplings. So yes, Linny is quite correct about that. My old, my 1870s carriages also use Hornby chassis. I'm just going to bend this out because it, it's bowed a little bit. Luckily I've got something heavy and flat I can put it under on the original one here. That's a triangle chassis. I've removed the brake gear. Some bits have fallen off because I never did them properly. But yeah, that's that's a triangle chassis with some footboards added to it. Yes, I, I knew you'd like that project, Alex. When he mentioned it earlier, I thought, oh, what a much better use for that chassis. You're right about that, Alex. Everyone should have an LMWR coal tank. However, they, when they came out in double O, I didn't have money, so I don't have one. But I do, however, have a load of LMWR carriage drawings ready to send off to a certain person who does some laser cut carriage kits. Not sponsored. <laughs> Don't do that. That's just mean. Well, 
all these times I've been a moderator for you and you come and be a moderator for me and start talking about spiting everyone. It's not our fault the GWR is an inferior railway. You know what, Killian? I've actually ignored St. Patrick's Day today, mainly because I'm a Guinness drinker and I'm streaming with a knife. Have you had a good St. Patrick's Day? No, no idea who that could be, Linny. None at all. Not sponsored. Remember, Luke, the moderator is a great Western fan, and I'm far enough away from the laptop to not be able to undo him putting you on a timeout. Ah, so Killian, I do normally celebrate St. Patrick's Day. My business partner is Irish. And so we normally go out and have a few drinks during the day but knowing I was doing this tonight I thought I'd best not because it's quite a few drinks I do not have any great Eastern coach drawings, Luke, but I'm sure many people could come up with them. You just have to find someone, someone that is um. willing to give you their time making design work in return for your money. Because you can't expect people to work for free. <laughs> Put Alex, but again, I will repeat my warning that the moderator is a GWR fan and I can't reach the laptop to undo him putting you on a timeout.
Honestly, Luke, I can think of a few people on RM Web who would be able to, to supply you with great Eastern coach drawings. It's not an unpopular railway. Not as popular as the Brighton, of course, but it's not as good as the Brighton. Contrary to what you've seen so far, Mr Lancaster, I don't need any help cutting myself. I'm quite capable of doing it all by myself. Hey, we've got another one out. I'm not sure about this Great Western Panny as making good industrial locos. I mean, what do you need a Great Western Panny for when you could have a Peckett or a Barclay? Much better industrial locos. The only thing that industrial panniers are good for is upsetting GWR fans when I tell them I have a pannier that's blue. Because for some reason a lot of them don't like their panniers being painted blue. Hello there, Corbs. How are you? <laughs> oh, I have three panniers, Mr. Lancaster. Two fifty sevens and a twenty seven twenty one. Only one of them's painted blue, the the rest are in Great Western. One of them may be representing a certain member of the class that I'm sure Mr Corbs would appreciate.
yes, Alex, I'm sure you're extremely disappointed about my three panniers. Yeah, blue's a great colour for an engine, isn't it, Corbs? When, when I used to do a fictional railway, all my engines were blue. They didn't look as good as yours, though. two of them out. One more to go and we can put this side together. And for those not already privileged with the information, thanks to Mr Lancaster, my moderator, there are plans to build a layout over these live streams, which will be a slightly modified Inglenook plan. So a logo can come in, run round, push the trucks in and go again for a logo to come out of this siding and do the Inglenook puzzle. And for this, all the stock is going to be built in these live streams. This brake van being the first bit. I have not done much more 009 recently, Corbs. I have it all sat looking at me, staring at me. Um, just off shot is where I actually trial painted a bit of livery on my workbench because that's the next thing I'm building up trying to do is lining it all with a bone pen. And that will be my first proper use of a bone pen so it's something I'm rather nervous about. But I'll get there. And if my, if my lining with a bow pen goes really, really well, I'm going to be really brave and try etching my own name plates and number plates. Be 
because I have a lot of scrap brass. So that doesn't cost me anything as such. there we have little more than an hour into the stream all the parts for one side of the brake fan considering this is the second one of these I cut because I threw one away I think that we've done quite well there Luke, I've seen what you can do modelling wise. You would be great with some lining transfers. You wouldn't have any problem with that whatsoever. You have no need to fear that. You could probably do lining transfers better than I can because I'm terrible at them. Which is why I give locos to other people to line. And so now we can try or fit the pieces on there and see we have a pretty decent side. The tricky bit here is gluing it without getting glue everywhere. But we have tricks for that as well. I'll use the new one because the old one's terrible. You're not, you are the old one. Let's see if we can get some glue out of you. Poundland super glue because oh, I really do do this on the cheap. And I'm just going to put some out onto the workbench. This is why dedicated work area is good. A pair of tweezers and I can just get a tiny bit of glue onto the back. down. Of course you have to be very careful with touching it because it will stick to everything except for what you want it to stick to. But just like that we have something that I believe is significantly better what I could have managed putting the glue directly onto the part because there is very little glue bleed there. And we can do the same with the bigger part. Try not to drop it into the glue though, that's when you start to get problems.
and will it get stuck to your fingers when you're trying to flatten it out. No, I'm sure you're far from the only one that does it, Rick. Of course, I can now place that under the glass, which puts the weight on it and will hold the parts down until they dry. Thank you very much, Killian. I'm rather glad this is going so well. And to give my hand a quick break, Luke asked about the E4 he sent to me. It was not long ago he sent me this, and it was in almost perfect condition when it arrived with me. It looks a bit different now. There's its smoke box door. There's its dome. It has lost many parts. It has no ha it has no front to the handrails anymore. It has no cab. All these parts have been donated to another project and the rest of this is going to another project. The project using them so far is my backdated to as built condition E4 which as you can see has the um, extra handrails glued on the top the blue tacked on the top at the minute ready to be glued on the front once I get the handrail knobs fitted No, you are far from the only one that does that, Luke. In fact, just off screen down here, I have a big pile of everything that I have pulled off so far tonight. No sniggering at the back there. PG, remember? So... With that little intermission out of the way, let's find a position where my chair is comfortable again. It's very squeaky, it's an X Rocker gaming chair. Great for gaming, not so good for recording on. Let's do one of the ends then. Thank you guys. Yes, Alex, I did think actually that the um, Luke's old E4 as it is with no cab does look rather good on its own, doesn't it? As a large industrial. I just put that straight down in the super glue. That was clever of me. Now I have super glue all over my ruler. See folks, you don't need to worry about getting things wrong. Because I'm doing it on camera for you. That one, because it's so close to the edge. Not 
so happy to be prized off. But if you can get a good grip on it with something, it will still go down the score line. Uh, with the bits of the E4 that are left over so far, the chassis is going to be donated to one of a few projects. And the rest is possibly forming a bit of a freelance body on another chassis. Now this is the awkward bit with my drawings because I've put the roofs on them. So I've actually got two lines there and I need to always remember to follow the inside one. I have quite a few times forgotten to do that in the past and then said, oh, why is my side too high? And that's why. Of course, the more I do, the more I cut, the more I'm doing here. The more pressure I'm putting on the glass, the more I'm pushing our bits together that we've already done. So it's all helping. I think I know what locos you are talking about, Lanky, but um, I can't picture them at the moment. Send me a picture on Twitter and I'll have a look later. Square windows on the ends, it's nice to me like that. And I can confirm, I know the, that I've got this right, because although I, these are my drawings, I have the actual drawing there to reference as well. The original ones as built with the lantern didn't have these windows and I actually forgot to add them to my drawing until earlier today. So earlier today I was building this brake van with no windows in the ends and the, the guard wouldn't have got a very good view with a train like that. That, but being square windows means I don't need to drill, I can just go straight in with the knife. And again I'm going up to each edge and just rolling the knife away because it is such a short space that I am cutting. I will go back onto the wood so I can push right through again. Always score them once first. It makes the hole straighter and stops you getting too much of the hole expanding at an angle because of the shape of the knife blade.
Ah, oh, yes, I know what locos you're on about now, because if I recall right, Corpse is Evil Thomas. Is based, loose, based loosely off of them. With its Shamford Cab Corners 062. Can I have a confirmation on that if you're still around, sir? That is assuming you haven't already confirmed it and I just haven't seen yet because lag. Excellent. I know I knew them from somewhere. Thank you, sir. My knife is getting old and the blade slides out a bit too easy now. I need to sort that. I haven't come up with an idea of how to do it yet, but I'm sure there's something I can do. glue's going off now because I can see it's starting to stain on there. That's a bit not quite come through properly there. But we have one brake van side. Which is on the floor, but still nice and flat because of its time under the weight. Oh, did you, Luke? And why is it not working? Because, you know, I, I will fix it for you. I don't mind. You could have sent it here along with the E4. It would have been packaged, fixed and packaged back up to come back to you. And I probably would have done a video on it for you as well.
thank you all. I'm glad you are liking it. Um, and I'm glad your chassis is sort of working, Lanky. Let's score this a couple more times. I was going to try and pry it, but I think it's still a bit too solid. Ah, that would cause problems, yes. Now see, if you'd have sent your airbrush off to me, I could have sorted that. I have quite a few of the rods for down the middle in stock. I could have just replaced it for you. I still could if you need it doing. You have my address, stick it in the post. Terribly, that curve, that roof curve there. Nothing a quick file can't fix. Much better. And that one's alright as well. So now we need the beading for the ends. Yeah, send, send me your airbrush then Luke, I will fix it for you, that's not a problem. have the parts not cut myself but I am going to drop everything constantly beading for the ends is much easier because it's much, much thicker. No, no, I don't need your compressor, Luke. I just need the airbrush. I have a compressor. I have all that. I can sort it for you. It's not a problem. My workbench didn't get this covered in paint without having a compressor. I hate to think how long I've been offering to fix that airbrush for you now. I'll give it a full strip down, clean out, get it back being as good as new, replace anything that needs replacing.
yeah okay I probably have the coupling but I mean that's not going to cost you anything extra it's not going to be any harder to stick that in the box with it and send it is it so do that So with these end pieces, this is a good example of how with scratch building you can start with some, you can start at a level you're confident with and go back and add more after. Because these two strips down the middle should actually stick out another level after this. But if you don't have the tools to do it and you don't think you can do it well enough, you could leave it like this and come back when you feel more confident and add them later. It's not something that's particularly hard to do, but as I always like to remind people, it is mainly confidence that is the problem with scratch building. So if you don't feel confident doing a certain detail, you can leave it off and come back when you do feel confident doing it. Um, if you could put your airbrush back together for me please Luke before sending it off and I will strip it down again once it gets here. Because my mind prefers doing that because it, I take note of how I've stripped it down and can reverse the process to put it back together. So although I have the stream playing on my telly off to my left, I haven't been looking at it much really. So how is everyone finding the quality of this? Especially audio because I have everything muted here, I can't hear what's hear anything. Excellent, thank you guys. I'm very glad about that. Since the stream today is being run by my phone because it's more powerful than my current laptop. I never thought I'd live in a world where that was a thing. 
Not sure why my phone needs 8 gig of RAM to be honest, but there we go. I'm just looking over now and seeing that I've been cutting in a place that you guys can't see, but I don't want to get too close to this puddle of super glue. Of course, this is the problem with not being able to view the stream in real time. I can't see whether I'm on or off camera until the lag catches up with me. Still, that'll be fixed when I get my new laptop. But I've got to stop buying trains for that. I believe you find the correct term, Mr. Lancaster, is because reasons. <laughs> yes, Alex, 8 gig of RAM and a quad core 2.5 gig processor in my phone. Goes well with its 128 gig solid state drive. It's, it's almost a computer. <laughs> I could probably run Windows on it, but it would be Windows 10, and why would I want to run that? Excellent, thank you Luke. You get that sent off and I will fix it for you and get it straight back. And I say I'll get it straight back, I'll take it to the office and one of the staff will put it in the post. Because I have someone to do that for me. You, you see the conundrum, Alex. I was going to be buying a new laptop next month. But I've spent a load of the money that was a side of it on baseboards for this. So. That will have to wait a little bit longer now. <laughs> oh, it might have been for the first time you were shown it, Mr. Lancaster, but I know the original source. <laughs> it was a webcomic I used to read. Very nerdy, very good. Then it ended. Yes, Alex, quad core processor. And would you believe this phone is two years old? I'm due for an upgrade in a couple of months' time. So I have an even more absurdly powerful phone. And this one will be relegated to being a camera full time. Because it is capable of doing 4K 3D at 60 FPS, so why get a real camera?
I'm not streaming in 4K because I don't think my internet connection could handle it. Especially since I've got the stream coming back down. What's wrong with Windows 10? Oh, Jesus, Luke, what isn't wrong with Windows 10? <laughs> Technology's great, Alex. Technology is a wonderful thing. Technology is what pays for all my trains and means I get to, you know, climb on top of World War II gun batteries. We nearly have an end. In a minute we're going to get to a bit that I'm going to forget and it's going to be a problem when I forget. And that is that this side I'm now scoring the planks into needs cutting down. Because I made these drawings so that they could be used regardless of materials, everything is full length which doesn't work. This needs to fit inside these ends, which it won't. So it needs the 20 foul thickness of this taking off each side of it. But I know me, I'll forget to do that. Technology is evil black magic, says the man who streams gaming six nights a week. I was installing internet, Luke. That is what I was doing. That is kind of my job. Doesn't have a gun in it anymore. It's a house. In fact, I was installing the sort of internet that you can only have if you can afford to live in an old World War II gun battery. <laughs> I know, it's, a, it's very wrong of me to bring logic to an argument, isn't it, Alex?
Right. Let's give this side a clean up. And now we shall thicken our lines before cutting it down. I haven't forgotten that I have to cut it down yet. That comes right at the last moment when I'm meant to do it that I forget. When it's too late for you to all shout at me and remind me because I'm already miles ahead because lag. Sparky, how are you today? So for cutting the ends down, I take a bit of scrap use that to line up where the knife needs to go and we cut. I always score first, as I did then, because then, when if I have to move, and this comes off, I can line it back up again. Ah, oh, the joys of work, yes. Oh, I spend my Sunday nights forgetting I have to go to work, usually. Sparky, you join us in the midst of our brake van build. We already have one side done and we are very shortly going to have one end done. There is our scratch built side. Oh, focus. No, we're not going to focus now. Oh, good. 
there we go one scratch built side and so these parts are about to go together and become our our first end problem with this glue is it's getting old and it takes a while to run out the pot but we'll do this exactly the same as we did last time pouring it onto the bench and putting the beading into it thank you Sparky that is it took me a long time to practice and learn how to do that properly the trick is using the back of the knife for the plank lines. So we are aiming for something the same as this one, but without the lantern lookout on the top, we have windows in the ends instead, which is how these were rebuilt later in life. And again, the reason for doing the glue like this is it means I get less glue on the part and therefore less run. Just have to get it all lined up properly. Come off already. Yes, as Lancaster says, that one took me about four hours to build. I, I know how long it took because I was sat watching movies with the kids when I built it. And we are about two hours into this build. Given that I've had to throw some bits away because I did it wrong, I think we're doing quite well for time. Yes, I suppose they were over there. This is um, these ones were originally built in eighteen eighty one, and are from the southeast of England, the, the London, Brighton, and South Coast Railway. They were rebuilt nineteen hundred to nineteen oh seven, I think, and one of them lasted until nineteen twenty eight. So, quite an old brake van design. Well, if you want Highland Railway ones, you'll have to speak to someone else who did a Highland Railway truck and then gave up on the idea of doing the Highland Railway. I don't know who that is, though.
So it's time for the second side. Let's try and not mess this one up and have to do it again. <laughs> Your engage lettering was fine. Thought all those really small letters don't need to be legible anyway. But yes, I know what you mean. Work, working in um, four mil, the, the the proper scale, none of this M works really well. Not that I was an optimist on how far we'd get tonight and had transfers out ready or anything. Got to be an optimist occasionally. in the super glue again. And it's all over the paper on there now, which means that's gonna soak through and this paper's gonna be really hard to get off. Joy of joys. Oh look, I look over and you're just finding out that I super glued my ruler to myself and my paper. There's the lag. <laughs> but that is of course why this ruler has very little lettering on it anymore. Is because it's all been peeled off by super glue. Not a problem with glass, you can just run a knife over it and peel off any excess super glue. Another good reason for my glass plate. So again, we're doing the planking on the side here, which we start off by scoring the lines with the knife normally, as you would do anything else.
Yes, yes, one gauge, very sensible. It's a great idea. Whoever told you that was obviously a very clever person. It's just a shame you chose N-Gauge as that one gauge. But you really don't need to ask anyone permission to go into another gauge. It's your stock and you can do as you wish. <laughs> oh, hello there, Sam. How are you? Welcome to the stream. Have you been lingering long? Oh, I haven't told you to do that yet because I don't want you to do that yet and I don't even want those words blurred out like that this is PG could you please delete that one Mr. Moderator No, we don't need to ban Sam. He's good, really. We like having a Sam around. Let's just go over all the planking a second time now. Give him time, Lanky. He, he can insult the Great Western for you all day. I'm sure it's not a problem. <laughs> it's what I do at a lot of streams, Sparky, just lurk in the background. It saves me having to talk to people usually.
doing this stream tonight is something I wanted to do to challenge myself to be that bit more social and open and to beat those anxieties. Yes, Sam, um, on occasion in the Mr. Lancaster's stream I talk more than many, but that's because Mr. Lancaster's stream is frequented by a group of people I have grown comfortable with over time. And so it's not quite as scary. Right. <laughs> I've never thought that when you've come along to Lancaster's stream, Sparky. I sit there and moderate quite happily. Yeah, I know, I never say a word in your chat, do I, Alex? In fact, Alex, I think you'll find when other people turn up and you start talking game talk, I very often do just sit there and shut up. <laughs> because there's lots of other scary people around. But I'm quite enjoying doing this stream and I'm definitely going to do it again. So we, we have once again, as we did for the first side, drilled through the corners to give us our rounded corners to the windows. And we are just cutting through to join those drill holes together. It would have been great if you did turn up earlier, Sam. Even with some of your habits. I've got a moderator to deal with you. Still, we'll do this all again next week and you can come along earlier then. You forgot Well, Mr. Sen, that's not very nice, is it? But I'll be here next Sunday, sat at the workbench. 
because Mr. Lancaster has given us lots of things to do on stream with ideas he's been funneling into my head over the last week. You'll notice a layout up here. And in fact, just off camera above that is one of the maps of the Oak Hill branch that you drew up way back when. Ah, you don't need to be awake to be here. If you're tired, you'll be quiet. <laughs> Maybe there'll be less singing. What is this place? I've never heard of it before. What's there? What are you going to do there? You want them to fund you over to America to fix these IT problems? You don't even have a degree in it. Where's my trip? Paid for by other people. <laughs> no, no, you're not allowed to enjoy yourself, Sam. Weekend or not. Sorry, I don't approve of that. Good, we're peeling off the sides as I'm trying to, to trace them. This is always the fun bit when that happens. Ah, narrow gauge steam locos, excellent. I'm still not sure you're allowed to enjoy yourself, though. That's a lot of locos in steam. I'm rather jealous now. <laughs> right. 
that is all the lines I can get carved on this one with the paper on it. I've only got the ventilators to carve in. I'm sure I won't forget to do them. Thanks for coming, Sparky. See you later. And I shan't be staying up too late. I have a school run to do in the morning and work. So we probably have about half an hour left of stream, maybe a little bit more, depending on how I'm feeling. And clean up the side with the IPA. How did you break a loco on Train Sim World? And are you sure it's not Dovetail's fault? Because I've heard some things about them. <laughs> so something about Sem having not insulted the GWR, yeah? <laughs> so all, all these crashes you'll have to call in the RAIB going Brighton well done sir much better use for the line and now we engrave over the lines with the back of the knife to get nice planking Yes, yes, politics are not accepted here. Well done, sir.
Now, now, I, I, I notice in my rules it says don't argue with the moderator. Moderator's decision is final. Perhaps something may not seem very political, but the moderator may have other reasons for deciding it is so. Now, now, Sam, I quite like the 30 freeze. But on a much more stream related note, we have an end piece that has finally dried. Well, hey, there we go, focus. These bits around the doors, yeah, the edges of the paneling came out absolutely terribly because it was pulling up. So I'm going to have to try and do them freehand. But I have the planking for them in place. Sam, I lied, I can get to the laptop to delete things. I just end up kicking the microphone as a result. Oh, I'm out of um, generic red label, sugar free black liquid. Let me just refill that. I also have chocolate here I should eat. we once again cut the bead in. I don't think I gave you time to miss it actually, Lanky. You're just noticing 
the extreme lag since it's only just come up. I'm glad it's an enjoyable way to spend a Sunday night, Alex. I, I take it it was worth breaking your no technology on a Sunday rule then. Glad to hear it, Alex. So if it was very worth it, that must mean you'll be back next week when we carry this on. Because that's definitely a thing that's going to happen. I can't say I enjoy standing around in the freezing doing that sem. No, no matter how many trains there are, oh, I like warmth. I've done my time of being frozen. Excellent, glad to hear it Alex. Hopefully I will have the baseboards for the layout next week. So we might spend some time discussing plans for that. Because I would love to have feedback of everyone. And of course looking at um, how good these laser cut baseboards I've ordered are. Yes, yes, atmospheric, Sam, yes, quite. I know exactly what you mean, but I don't do cold anymore. I've reached a point in life where I don't have time to be cold. I'd much rather be comfortable. 
Hence why, as mentioned earlier, I have quite an expensive gaming chair sat up my workbench. Not because I game at the workbench, but because it's comfortable. Thank you, Luke. I'm glad someone sees the point of what I'm making. Well, if you can't light the porter's ring fire, Sam, you'll just have to find a dustbin to put on the platform and light the fire in that and have a little hobo fire going. That'll keep you warm. And you know, if you've got any passengers about that are particularly annoying, don't let them stand near it and let them freeze instead. You thought I was going to say something different there, didn't you? Well, I wasn't. <laughs> I'm glad you thought I was going somewhere else with that. Yes, Sam, the joke was that I didn't say that and everyone knew that's where I was going. It didn't need typing. That was the joke. Because I do those occasionally. No, no, I don't condone, endorse or encourage the burning of passengers. Just, you know, not letting annoying passengers stand near your hobo fire. Because it's your hobo fire, not theirs. This part is almost done. Yeah, the second part can stay, that's fine.
Look, we've got two panels out of it. <laughs> oh, I'll imagine that second disclaimer, Sam. Oh, your fire bucket's not filled with sand anyway. Rather than water. Can't drench someone in sand. Oh, fair enough. So I've had fire buckets dumped on me before. They definitely weren't filled with water. It'd be a lot more pleasant if they were. Well, we go back to the days when I didn't mind being frozen in the cold. Yeah, I think that's enough with those jokes now, people. PG, children, all that. We might even have a pair of children currently in chat, so... Yes, sand does get everywhere. No, no, Mr. Lancaster, I, I meant in the purely legal sense of the word children. You are just a child, mentally. I mean, if we, if we want to go down mental age route, there's a child hosting. generic black liquid. Alex see my reply to Mr. Lancaster.
So it's 10 to midnight folks, very nearly time for us to call it a night. I think I shall get this side finished and then we shall do just that. And then I shall not touch this brake van again until next weekend. Unless of course you want me to finish it in the meantime and come back with something new. Oh no, no it's not an energy drink Mr Corbs. I do not do energy drinks. I used to have a terrible addiction to Red Bull which got rather beyond what it should have done and as a result do not touch energy drinks anymore. We are with red labelled zero sugar cola flavoured drink today. No, Sam, it's definitely a solution. A compound is one of those weird locomotives with cylinders that do funny things to use the steam twice or something. I'm not very good at the technical aspect of these railways. Unless, of course, I have Wikipedia open in front of me, then I'm brilliant at it. Oh, that was silly, Mr. Lancaster. Poor Pania. What did it do to deserve that? It's not its fault it was Great Western. <laughs> right, so we're going with leaving the brake, ba brake van as is for the week and finishing it on stream. That is fine. We shall do that. And we shall talk about this layout idea. No, I can imagine it's not PG if you're doing things like that. Luckily you're not the one streaming today. Good night, Killian. Thank you for coming. It's been very much appreciated. As I say, the stream shall be ending very shortly anyway. I shall get this side finished and we are done. Yes, Sam, Mr. Keen has been here for the whole stream. Didn't turn up late, unlike some.
Thanks for coming, Killian. I hope we hope we see you again when I next stream. Which I shall probably keep to just being Sunday nights. For now anyway. Now, now, chaps, let's not argue about the colour of Midland locomotives and just agree that they were fabulous. <laughs> oh, I imagine he has corpse, yes. Uh, when I think of compounds, it's always the Midland compound. I have two of them in double O. One day something might happen with them. I think one of them lost its wheels to an eye through. But shh, don't tell Alex. Yeah, no, I wouldn't have got black with 1938 on the cab side as a reference, Sam. Um. Didn't just snap it. That's fine. It'll live. Well, if we want to debate what the most fabulous locos are, I have eight terriers sat behind me. I didn't say Midland locos were the most fabulous, and we should all argue about what's better. I said they are fabulous. No need to argue. After all, most of us are just grown men playing with toy trains.
We've not quite got enough glue there. So we'll dab in with the tweezers because again it stops us getting loads of glue on there and therefore we get less bleed coming out of the parts keeping the whole assembly much much cleaner. I would usually use a cocktail stick for this but I don't have any. Thank you Mr Lancaster, I am quite happy with the progress I have made tonight over the course of three hours. We have two sides and the end of a brake van. And Sam, I wouldn't know what the last loco shown by the BBC was. That would require me to watch the BBC. I can guess it was a terrier based on what you're saying. But I don't know. Don't come off, I had you there. Don't fall on the floor because I will fall apart before I get under the glass. Well, you can join earlier next week, Sam. No excuses about having just come back from places. It has been very good having you all here. I have been very happy with the way the stream has gone. There will definitely be more. I'm quite looking forward to doing it again already. But for tonight, we have two sides and an end of a brake coat, a brake van. And we shall continue next week. Thank you all for watching. And I shall speak to you later. Good night.